my lovely, lovely imps. Anna Kasparian of the Young Turks has been canceled by Twitter. By by Twitter. Super canceled. I mean the most can oh so canceled. She's so canceled. Her show is over. She's no longer an executive producer or host of the Young Turks. She's no longer very, very loaded from her lucrative job at the Young Turks. She no longer has a giant, uh, 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 huge YouTube presence. She no longer has a Twitter account. Of course, I'm lying to you. There has been no such cancellation. However, Anna Kasparian did get a bit of a dog pile just a tiny bit of a dog pile on uh on twitter recently and we have to talk about it because a lot of people have been talking about it uh and i think that they've missed some important points um others have not i've seen a couple of people do some pretty good videos on it but we there's some strange things going on here and i don't really understand uh the entire reason why any of this really happened in the first place so without any further ado let me introduce you to the tweet in question the tweet that ended anna kasparian's career forever you can't even say anna kasparian's name anymore joe biden banned i am breaking the law by saying anna kasparian's name because joe biden himself canceled anna kasparian let's talk about it Okay, here we go. Ready? This is the tweet, okay? I'm a woman. Please don't ever refer to me as a person with a uterus, a birthing person, or a person who menstruates. How do people not realize how degrading this is? You can support the transgender community without doing this shit. Now, that seems a little weird at first glance doesn't it? it seems kind of weird to be like i'm a woman uh you can support trans people without being like this and it was a kind of a weird i mean the tweet in and of itself is kind of strange it just kind of comes out of nowhere and fires a shot uh at sort of imaginary people that are saying that in order to support the trans community um, you must use the terms uterus, birthing per person with a uterus, birthing person, or person who menstruates, which I, I, I would contest the popularity of, uh, uh, of that rhetoric specifically in the first place. But secondly, what and why? When does, when has anyone ever referred to Anna Kasparian as a person with a uterus, a birthing person, or a person who menstruates? In fact, when does anybody ever use those terms? Because, and I'm speaking as a trans person here, I am at not just a, not just your everyday run of the mill trans person. I am an online streamer trans person who every single day is engaging in one way or another with the current discourse uh, in trans political spaces, uh, in trans activism. Uh, that is like my literal job. I do it all the time. And I just basically never hear these terms, except for one example, one exception. And that's when people are talking about medicine specifically. So like, for example, uh, if someone was, say, discussing the type of people who can get an intrauterine device. The doctor might say, well, people with uteruses can get an intrauterine device, seeing as how the intrauterine device is designed for people who have uteruses. Do you see how that kind of makes sense? Now, in the past, a doctor might have simply said, well, uh, women get intrauterine devices. But, as would be correctly pointed out, actually, people who aren't women do currently, in real time, get intrauterine devices. Like, for example, trans men who have a uterus. Trans men who have not had any sort of 
uh, a reconstructive surgery uh, uh, on their genitals will have a uterus and they might desire to have an intrauterine device. And so in some medical settings, for clarity and for accuracy, uh, somebody might say, well, who gets an intrauterine device? Well, a person with a uterus. And likewise, with regard to the term birthing person, uh, might be a response to, you know, you might be asking a doctor, well, uh, what type of people, like a, like maybe you're a, maybe this doctor is a, a doctor who, who handles uh, uh, births, a natal doctor. Uh, uh, and, and then they would say, well, who, who do you help with births? And they go, well, any birthing person, any person who can get pregnant and give birth is somebody that we would help at my natal clinic. It seems relatively straightforward. Um, and, and that's part of the reason why this tweet comes off so weird because they're not even talking about the same thing. Like I'm a woman. Please don't ever refer to me as a person with a uterus, birthing person, or person who menstruates. But these are not used in the same context. When people are talking about women, they're generally talking about people who call themselves women. Unless they're a TERF, which is a trans-exclusionary radical feminist, at which point that person, a TERF, would specifically be talking about people who have, um, you know, XX chromosomes. You see, the only people that when people are talking about women as a, as a group, now it is true that sometimes there are things like, um, you know, people make mistakes or whatever. Like for example, someone might say, oh, well, you know, women have vaginas when we all know that not only is it that there are people who have vaginas who aren't women, but also there are women, people who live their lives as women, who are identified by, as women, who identify themselves as women, who do not have vaginas. Um, that's more of like a, a mistake. It's somebody not really thinking about what they're saying in that case. But nobody replaces the word woman generally with person with a uterus. In fact, that's the opposite of what trans people would be arguing for. Um, this is part of the reason why this last part doesn't make any sense. Trans people don't argue to replace the word woman with person with a uterus because trans people are the ones making the argument that women aren't, don't all have uteruses. This, this argument is deranged on its face. It's just so wrong. It doesn't make any sense. Most of the time, when people are making this conflation, it's either a mistake and it's in the opposite direction. Nobody says we're replacing the word woman with birthing person. Nobody says we're replacing the word woman with person who menstruates. They would be saying, who uses a tampon? People who menstruate. Who needs a tampon? People who menstruate. Who needs a menstrual cup? People who menstruate. Who needs birthing support? People who give birth. That's, that's where it's talking about. And let me point something out because this is the area where it actually becomes rather important. Um, did you know that there are actually pretty severe medical, um, negative medical outcomes for trans people uh, all over the world because of exclusionary language, exclusionary policy, and exclusionary education around what types of body parts what types of people have. Let me give you a very explicit example of this. Did you know that trans women, even trans women who have SRS, aka reconstructive genital surgery, they, did you know that they still need to get pros, their prostate checked? A lot of even trans people don't know this because it's just a poorly educated thing. The prostate, which is a high risk organ for cancer, is not removed and it doesn't disappear because you uh, uh, change your, your social uh, expression, because you change your gender. 
obviously we all here, I hope, will acknowledge that gender and sex are different things. That uh, sex is a, a, uh, a loose corollary based around what your genetics are, whereas gender is how you live your life how you present yourself, the clothes that you wear, the roles that you fill, the way that you introduce yourself. I hope we can all acknowledge that. Um, and a so anyway, as a result of this, because this information is not popularly recognized, a lot of doctors who are otherwise very good at their jobs forget to recommend prostate screening for trans women because they forget that it's not men who need prostate screening, it's people with a prostate. Anybody who has a prostate, intersex, non-binary, a trans woman, all of these, and then of course cis men, these are all types of people who might have a prostate and might need to get a prostate exam to screen for cancer. There's another, uh, uh, another thing, um, which is the reverse of this, of course, which is that, of course, there are men who have uteruses and need to have uterine exams for regular uterine exams for cancer risk. And of course, it would be inaccurate to say that only women need uh, these types of screening when, of course, we know that there are men, people who identify as men, who live their lives as men, who also need these screenings as well. Hence where in medical terminology, things like person with a uterus, birthing person, person who menstruates becomes useful, not to categorize somebody else, not to be like, all women are birthing persons, all women. That is a brain dead interpretation. Cervical screening, screenings is a better word. Thank you. It's a... Uh, this is a really basic thing, which is why it's so shocking for Anna Kasparian to have even made this tweet, but also to have doubled down to the degree that she has. And when I say double down, we're going to get into that in just a second. But when I, when I say that Anna Kasparian has doubled down, she has doubled down really hard on this. And not only that, but um, the other main executive producer over at the Young Turks, Chink uh, we, Uger, Uyghur, I always pronounce his name wrong. I'm very sorry. I always mess it up. I'm really sorry about that. But, uh, Chenk has also doubled down on it. In fact, going so far as to say that men are lecturing her on what it's like to be a woman, which is of course starts to really take a, it starts to really sound, um, a little bit like turf rhetoric, doesn't it? being like, I made a really dumb tweet that doesn't even make sense. Like on a basic level, no one anywhere is arguing the word woman be replaced with person with a uterus. They are simply saying four things that are about medical health or, or about uteruses, you shouldn't just say women. It, it's so funny. The opposite of what she's saying, her position is more, is worse. She is arguing that you should use the word woman in all circumstances that you're talking about somebody who has a uterus. That is more objectifying. That is more offensive and more degrading. The idea that only that you should that whenever you think of a uterus, you should think of the word woman is more degrading than say than having a a term for the broad group of people that have uteruses, which include once again I'll list it again uh, trans men, non-binary people, intersex people, and cis women. And then, of course, in response, you get this sort of, I'm being lectured by men on what it means to be a woman. The trans lobby has gone too far. And it's really unfortunate because I actually generally respect Anna Kasparian uh, 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 a reasonable amount. Obviously, I have some pretty major uh, political differences with the Young Turks. The Young Turks are a, uh, these days, a relatively, um, let's say they're a little bit further to the left than, than like the mainline Democratic Party. Not a whole lot. 
they're more like an AOC faction. They're like in line with with AOC generally. So they're more left. They're a little more left than than like the mainline Democratic Party, but they still hold on to a lot of positions that I, being a radical leftist, a scary radical leftist, would disagree with. Um, but I generally respect Anna Kasparian a lot. Um, just just so that we're clear, uh, this take is just genuinely really bad it's it's just wrong on so many levels didn't right wingers and turfs come out to defend her take why yes they did in fact if you browse through the quote tweets here you will find basically every major right wing figure jumped on this to be like look the trans people are destroying anna kasparian because she dared speak the truth and it's actually like literally matt walsh michael Knowles, tim pool all of them every single right winger jumped on this to come to anna kasparian they suddenly turned into the white knight woman defenders even though of course, their position is deranged and would never even... I, I, would, I wouldn't believe that Anna Kasparian would agree to any of these people for even a second. It is... Uh, it's wild. Discordant Vol says, Does this nullify the work that she and TYT have done towards the left? No, of course not. Uh, and then does it drop a care package to the right? Yes. But it, what's worse is it, it drops a care package to the right for completely stupid reasons. Like the dumbest reasons ever. You're, you're weighing in. You don't have to tweet everything that comes to your mind, especially when you have a 600,000 follower YouTube account. You don't have to jump in to the culture war around trans people. Guys, let's just have a quick refresher, okay? In the last three weeks alone, we've had two major incidences of of major right-wing figures calling for the explicit eradication from public life was the wording that he used. The eradication of trans people. We have had a massive doubling down and circling of the wagons. Every major right-wing figure has come to the defense of Michael Knowles. Um, we have, in the last few months, we've had Donald Trump declaring war on trans people. We have had a surge, an unbelievable surge of anti-trans bills, uh, uh, including, by the way, uh, this so-called, which, by the way, this is the first federal anti-trans bill that has passed the House, uh, which is the Parental Bill of Rights, which is a federal-level bill that allows... Um, uh, teachers to out students to their parents okay so there is a lot of anti-trans sentiment right now and anna kasparian has decided to make this argument one in which you sort of implicate the trans community to not only completely misunderstand what you're commenting about but also make an incredibly stupid argument this is a terrible argument it is a misrepresentation of what trans people are actually arguing for it's a misrepresentation of the use of the words it's just it's fractally wrong it's wrong to its core from somebody who is ostensibly a political professional somebody who is their job their entire career they're the executive producer of a politics and news tv show so with all due respect um, getting roasted for being this wrong and, and this blatantly wrong in this climate is totally, totally fair. Now, that doesn't mean that I think that uh, everything that every person said to Can Anna Kasparian is wrong. I have no doubt that there were some absolutely deranged people uh, saying demented things, as is always the case on Twitter. Uh, but I will also note that most of the earliest and biggest responses to Anna Kasparian were actually, let's just call them very, 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 very kitty gloves, okay? I'm going to read you an example of this, okay? And I also want you to keep in mind how different this is from when a trans person gets something wrong versus when a uh, very popular and influential cis woman 
gets something wrong. And just consider how wrong uh, this cis person was versus how much shit is actually thrown. So let me just give you an example of this, okay? Here's a thread from the Humanist Report. Mad respect to the Humanist Report. Longtime fan of the Humanist Report. Uh, 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 Mike is great. But let's let's take a look at what was said here, okay? Here we go. Let's zoom in just a tiny bit. Let's get this big, nice and big up on the screen. The Humanist Report says, I respect you a lot, but this notion that the mere existence of trans-inclusive terms, which are rarely used in casual conversations, somehow degrades women, comes right out of the right's anti-trans war on women playbook. There's a reason why they're, the, they're praising you for this. So, of course, this is the Humanist port, Report directly pointing out that uh, Anna Kasparian is being praised by the most heinous figures on the far right right now. Hey, Merrick, wonderful to see you. Absolutely wonderful to see you. And Anna Kasparian says, Hey, Mike, you're a, you're a guy who has no clue what it's like to have your reproductive freedom taken away. But consider what it's like to have the same lawmakers who failed to protect our rights turn around and call us people with uteruses. It's not inclusive if cis women hate it. Okay, let me try and see if I can explain just how stupid of a response this is. So, first of all, what does Mike being a guy have anything to do with the argument that he made? Let's review the argument that he made one more time. I respect you a lot, but the notion that the mere existence of trans-inclusive terms, which are rarely used in casual com convos, somehow degrades women, comes right out of the right's anti-trans war on woman playbook. And her response is, you're a guy who has no clue what it's like to have your reproductive freedom taken away. What does the reproductive freedom have anything to do with the argument that Mike is making there? The answer, of course, is nothing. It has... No, it is literally just a, it, it's a, it's a, it's a non sequitur. It has nothing to do with what he's talking about at all. But consider what it's like to have the same lawmakers who failed to protect our rights turn around and call us people with uteruses. I'm going to point something out, which is we all know the Supreme Court, the, it's, Roe v. Wade was taken down by the Supreme Court. The Supreme Court is not calling anybody people with uteruses. And secondly, she's still making the exact same mistake that she made in the first one, which is that literally no one, no one, not lawmakers, not uh, trans activists, no one is making the argument that except for interestingly, the far right. I should say the far right is making the argument that that women should be equivalent to people with uteruses. But other than that, no one is making the argument that women, the word woman, should be replaced with people with uteruses. In fact, the trans people and trans activists are making the opposite argument. They're trying to say there are people with uteruses who aren't women. There are people with uteruses who aren't men. There are people with uteruses who are non-binary. There are people with uteruses who are intersex. Oh, yes, Grandango. This is one of the dumbest things. I've, it's, it's, I can't even believe the level of stupidity. It's so stupid that it actually, like, it... It, it's 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 hard to believe that Anna Kasparian can even think this, and it makes me wonder: like, is there something else going on here? Because it's a comp it's a failure to analyze the re the political reality. It's a failure to understand the topic at hand, and it's just a bad argument, just genuinely stupid. I I don't know how to I, like. You expect this type of thing from like a Matt Walsh type from somebody who is dishonest, from somebody who isn't actually, doesn't give a shit about the truth. Not from somebody like Anna Kasparian, who ostensibly does care about the truth. It's just very, it's, it's incompetent and, and bad. But let's continue. 
Here we see the humanist report says, how many people are actually referring to you using this language? It must be a lot for you to air this grievance in the middle of an international hate crusade against trans people. I'm sure Ben Shapiro is retweeting you because he supports your reproductive freedom though. Anna Kasparian says, this, this terminology is used by many major institutions, the ACLU, CDC, universities and new agents, news agencies and prominent progressive figures like AOC and the guilt by association charge is lazy and lame. First of all, he wasn't making a guilt by association claim. This is an argument that your stupid argument is giving them ammunition. That's not a guilt by association. That's saying you are being dumb in public, you're not thinking about it and you're helping them sell their narrative. That's not guilt by association. But secondly, ACLU, a legal organization that deals with medical cases often, the CDC, a medical organization that has to talk about medical health, and as it turns out, it's important if you are trying to prevent cancer to make sure that all people, man, woman, non-binary, intersex, or otherwise, who have a uterus, get the care, the, the, the gynecological care that they need. Universities, which are also often going to be discussing this in a medical uh, uh, situation, and news agencies, at which we have no context for what she's even talking about. Notice how this is the mo like her response is like like derangedly vague that she doesn't actually point out any specific examples that the truth of course being no one has ever uh, referred to her specifically as a person with a uterus. She only feels uh, apparently degraded by this because there is a terminology being used that also happens to describe her by, I mean, I assume, I don't even know if she has a uterus to be fair, but I assume that includes her via uh, talking about a demographic group, which is like, for example, like I said before, people with uteruses should make sure that they're getting screened for uterine cancer regularly. Mike, of course, intelligently responds, it's not about guilt by association. The point is that far-right fascists are using your tweet for anti-trans propaganda. There's no way you're not cognizant of this. I respect you, but this is really disappointing. I actually don't get it. So I'm clearly not the only person who is completely befuddled by the fact that she would even do this. Let's take a look at this. Here's Mike making another great point. The way the right justifies trans eradication is to monopolize the discourse while pretending that trans liberation is actually a war on women. They called gay marriage a war on marriage not that long ago. It's the oldest trick in the book. Please don't assist them with that narrative. And she is assisting them with that narrative. Her original tweet implies that trans people are trying to objectify and degrade women. You can support the trans community without doing this shit, this shit that she just made up. There's no ifs, ands, or buts about what her tweet is arguing. My wife shares the same opinion. I'm sure a lot of women don't want to be minimized to a bodily function or a body part. You are doing that. You are doing that. The inclusive language is is meant to no longer reduce women to only being people with uteruses. That's what the right wants. The right believes that women are people who have vaginas and uteruses and men are people with penises and that nothing else. That is their worldview. You are arguing against their worldview, but pinning it on trans people, but pinning it on the trans community and acting as though anybody other than your own sort of twisted mind on this particular subject is coming up with this. Hey, here's a here's a friend of the show, Riverboat Jack. Riverboat Jack says, I can understand the frustration as I am expected to always be referred to as a transgender woman instead of just a woman. In medical context, however, inclusion is important. Not everyone with a uterus is a woman. Medical care needs to be specific or else folks won't get care. Now, of course, 
there, I, I, I gave an example very similar to this earlier on, which is the fact that a lot of trans women don't know that they need to get prostate screaming, screenings and, and, and many trans men don't know that they still need to get regular screening for their genitals. They don't need, they don't, they don't know that they need to have cervical screenings. And you might think, well, a lot of people should know this, but lots of people aren't up to snuff on medical stuff. That's why we have doctors ostensibly. That's why we have nurses. We have specialization because the average person doesn't know all of the things that they need to know about their body. Here's another person here responding. Who called you that? I've only ever heard that term used when referring to a population, not an individual person. Obviously, those terms are meant to be precise to include all people who meet one of those characteristics when needing to discuss a relevant topic. Now, this is a doctor. Okay. For example, if you were writing a paper for a medical journal about preventing uterine cancer, you may want to reference the relative relevant population, people who have a uterus, not including people who've had a hysterectomy or trans women. And take a look at the, here's another example. Here's another example of exactly what I'm talking about here. I'm a woman. I don't have a uterus. I don't menstruate. And I have never been able to give birth naturally. How dare you take that for granted that women or that woman necessarily means any of these things. Please use language properly. And then the first response to this incredibly reasonable question, this is an incredibly reasonable thing. So you've had a hysterectomy. Women have hysterectomies. If not, you're describing a biological man. Do you, do you see? Isn't that, isn't that exactly what we were talking about? That Anna's argument is so bungled and mentally pretzled that it ends up supporting only the right wing position that she's actually unintentionally arguing for objectifying herself without even noticing that she's doing it. She is saying, uh, don't be precise and include people who have uteruses. Uh, only women have uteruses. That's what she's arguing. And she doesn't even notice that she's doing it. She doesn't even realize that she's doing it. Let's keep going and looking through some of these comments from these massive accounts. This is a 300,000 follower account. This person here is a small, uh, no, is a 100,000 follower account. This is a, a 50, a 60, almost 60,000 follower account. Most of these responses have been incredibly kind to Anna Kasparian. None of them have been like, we haven't seen a single uh, comment that's been like, you're terrible and stupid. Of course they're gonna exist, but all notice that all of these giant accounts came out to basically kid glove her. So uh, any claims that she's being eaten alive by the left is just bullshit on its face when all of these massive accounts were basically like, um, Anna, uh, Anna, uh, respectfully, um, your position doesn't even make sense on the basic level. You've got the, the, the entire premise wrong and you're actually arguing against what you say that you're arguing against. Um, just wanted to let you know, uh, you know, don't, don't, don't mind me, you know, don't feel like you have to read my comment. Alice Clark says, here's another account. This one's a small one. I get mis misled by the blue check. As someone who's had a hysterectomy, I find this kind of language really helpful when people are discussing something clinical. Like, does this text need to be done by everyone? Is it only a risk if you have ovaries? Or is it something that affects people who have, or uterus owners, people who have a uterus? I haven't seen anyone using those terms outside of medical settings, where it helps to make sure those with uteruses are included, but those who do not have uteruses aren't worried about needing certain tests. People should say women when they mean women, but be precise when speaking anatomically. Do you see? Apparently Gayfesh got blocked over this. You are literally still doing it. Despite your words in this video, you don't respect the trans community. You're still behaving as if only women can menstruate, have uteruses and get pregnant, excluding trans men and non-binary people from potential legal protections. Let's listen to this. Let's I listen write to this clip. being stripped. Here. 
Jasmine Bryant says, neither trans people or any organization that fights for us wants to refer to you as a birthing person. The language is used in a general sense to include trans men when a general statement is needed. When I'm reading about my rights being stripped away from me by the federal government, and when I'm reading quotes from the Democratic Party that failed to protect my reproductive rights, it adds insult to injury to read not women, but birthing people. Why? Why? What possible reason could you have? This is literally white woman moment. Unironical, un unironic fucking white woman moment. Just when when I am being legislated against, I don't want those other people who are also being legislated against to be hurt. Motherfucker, trans men need abortions too. Intersex women uh, need abortions too. Inter some intersex men need abortions too. Non-binary people need abortions too. You're not the only fucking person on the planet. Literally, what? I don't want to ever be referred to as a birthing person under any circumstance. I find it offensive. I respect the trans. You're not being referred to there. Everyone who needs access to birth services, everyone who needs access is being referred to there. It's not you. The world does not center around Anna Kasparian, the loudest white woman on the internet right now. Literal main character syndrome. Gender community. I just ask that they also respect how other people want to be referred to. Person with a uterus, person who menstruates, birthing people. I just find it incredibly demeaning. And I'm allowed to feel that way. I don't think that that's transphobic at all. I will fight to the death for equal rights for the transgender community. How can you fight for equal rights for the trans community? If you refuse to acknowledge that trans men who are transgender people need access to the same type of care that you do, how can you possibly say you support equal treatment and equal rights when you are explicitly saying that there is something offensive and bad about including those people who need care? in bills that give them that care. Period, and we've been doing that on this show. But respect goes both ways, it's that simple. Wait, I'm sorry, wait, can I play that back again? I'm sorry, wait, what? I think that that's transphobic at all. I will fight to the death for equal rights for the transgender community, period. And we've been doing that on this show. But respect goes both ways. It's that Attention trans community, you owe me my feelings. And my feelings are being hurt for a blatantly irrational reason. I'm getting offended over an issue that I don't even understand and that I can't correctly replicate even on Twitter. And you need to show me respect. That's not, um, pardon me for saying, but that doesn't sound like fighting to the death for equal treatment. That sounds like you're full of hot air and that you say, I'll fight to death for your rights, but that you don't really mean it. Because demanding respect from the trans community when people who, some of whom aren't like the, the, the biggest people who were responding there are not publicly trans people. The biggest accounts who were critique, critiquing her weren't even trans people. We're pointing out you're wrong about this. You are totally misrepresenting this. And you are literally pitching a softball directly to the right. Just, oh my, oh my dear God, oh my God. My, yes, literally, it's a my feelings are more important than you being able to get laws that ensure that you get medical care. It is a, a deranged level of self-centering. What a what a what a demented position to take. What a demented position to double down on. It does sound like white girl blinders. It sounds like like cis het white woman blinders. Yes, it does. Uh uh being like, um I 
didn't think about anything that I was saying. I didn't even correctly represent the position of the people I'm arguing against. I just made up a position in my head and then got it wrong and then pinned it on the trans community. Um, I'm offended over that and you need to make it right with me or else I'm going to talk to the manager of the trans community. I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to call the manager of the trans community and get you fired from the trans community. There is, there is so much, uh, I don't know. Uh, I'm, I'm sure that uh, we'll be hearing about this uh, uh, plenty uh, from their position. I'm sure that TYT is now permanently going to be in the uh, anti-inclusive terminology camp because uh, backing down would be uh, caving to the cancel mob. But to me, it comes off as insanely uh, cowardly spineless and frankly goddamn stupid uh to double down this hard when you can't even get the basic facts right oh yeah and then of course there's the chank stuff there's chank's stupid asshole behavior they got you they got you fighting a culture war to stop you from fighting a class war this is the most true political cartoon of all time. My co-host Anna Kasparian says this all the time and she's absolutely right. The culture wars are a giant distraction so you won't notice the robbery happening in the background. Both corporate Democrats and Republicans partake. Okay, guys, first thing you need to understand, I'm going to I'm going to do a quick shout out just real quick to uh, my boy uh Chapo legend Matt Chrisman, okay? I'm going to shout out to him. The uh, this is a distraction is liberal uh, is is liberal conspiracy theory. Unironically, it's actually uh, just the exact same thing that right wingers do, but the liberal flavor being like um, trans people having literal hundreds of bills targeted directly at their head, uh, entire uh, sections of the of the country becoming. D d dangerously unsafe for trans people that's just a distraction they they're distracting you from the truth it's it's no different than than uh, uh people who are like oh the russia investigation is a distraction from QAnon. it's the same fundamental conspiracy mongering He's also not even a socialist, obviously. Yes, of course, there's that part as well. But it's just hilarious to me that it's like the culture wars are a giant distraction. Motherfucker, it's not a distraction. It's not a distraction when you have a vulnerable population being targeted like crazy and an insane upsurge in violent protests against People who have done nothing wrong. The, the Proud Boys are showing up and terrorizing random drag shows just because of this so-called culture war that they believe in. That's not a distraction. That is the war, okay? People, marginalized people uh, who uh, leftists ostensibly are supposed to be fighting for having their lives... Uh, targeted their their well-being targeted becoming the the uh, uh, the target of of hate campaigns is not a distraction from anything so pathetic but then again I uh, I as you all know I have always been even less res I have even less respect towards chink uh, old union buster chink here we go, right here. Look at this. Look at the victim complex. Here's something everyone on the left and right should know. At the Young Turks, we don't get bullied. We love you all and we'll fight for you, but we're not going to change our mind because you think our opinion is incorrect or because you yelled at us. Never going to happen. <laughs> I'm shitting my pants and there's nothing you can do about it. We won't be bullied into sitting on a toilet and shitting into a toilet instead. Here at the Young Turks, we are proud pant shitters. Just, I don't know, like, this is this is always the funniest line. It's like, no, we refuse to actually engage with the arguments. We refuse to acknowledge that we were wrong on the basic facts of our arguments. We won't be, we refuse to, to cave to the cancel culture mob.
There's the article in chat if you want to know about the union busting that Chenk was involved in. Yeah, there you go. There's your there's your source on it. Just keep in mind, everybody, uh, ha have any of you tried to watch the Young Turks? Have any of you actually tried to watch the Young Turks? The Young Turks is like, is like unironically unwatchable. It's, uh, they are so loaded with ads. Every 10 seconds, they're like, and now a word from our sponsor, a butt bucket. And now a word from our other sponsor. It's like, it's, it's so loaded with ads. It's almost unwatchable. You just ad after ad, after ad, after sponsorship, read after sponsorship, read. I'm sure that's fantastic for your funding. I'm sure that's fantastic for your pocketbook, but please don't pretend like you're some sort of bastion of free speech. When you have, to, when you like 50% of your show is like ad reads. I know everybody in chat says they used to watch it. Um, uh, they used to watch it back in 2015 or 2016. Yeah, I know. They've only gotten worse since then. I'm tired of the left community eating itself while the right wing are still in lockstep in, ge in, in, gen in advancing a genocide against LGBT people. Is this the hill to die on? Is it worth it? You mean for Anna Kasparian? No, obviously not. The problem that's so frustrating about this is that Anna Kasparian is not just, it's not just that uh, like I disagree with her opinion. She's not even representing what she's arguing against correctly. Her argument is that you should use the word woman to refer to anyone who has a uterus. That argument is a turf argument. She doesn't even acknowledge that that's the argument she's making. She can't even be, she's not being honest about the argument she's making. To her, woman equals cis woman. It doesn't make any sense. It, it, it's so deranged. That's the problem. So the question should not be directed to the people who are correctly pointing out that her position is deranged. They should point out that her position is actively impeding the rights of the people she claims to care about in a very serious way. I'm not kidding you when I say that if you draft a law here, actually, you know what? I'm going to, I'm going to go, hold on. I'm going to show you something real quick. Hold on, let me just go to Gayfesh real quick. I'm gonna I'm gonna let Gayfesh. This is a shout out to Gayfesh who made a really fucking good argument about this. I'm just gonna uh, real quick. Let me just bring this up. I want to give credit because he he put this in a good way. Hold on, if I can find it. God damn it, you tweet a lot. Here we go. Right here. If someone drafts a law saying women have the right to an abortion, what happens when someone decides, well, a trans man isn't a woman, so we won't be allowing him to get an abortion. We will only survive together. You are buying, buying into turf rhetoric during a genocide. This is the exact thing. If you are making an argument that all that, that you should refer to anyone who has a uterus as a woman, first of all, She's making the argument she's supposedly offended about. She's arguing that a uterus equals woman, which is silly. And of course, it's it's silly on its face. But secondly, she's also making an argument in a on a very serious issue that is immediately pressing in politics, which is whether or not trans people will be included in the very laws that determine our well-being. So shout out to Gayfesh for that. And yes, of course, Green Ghost points out, my mom had a hysterectomy and doesn't have a uterus. Is she no longer a woman? Good question. That's a good question. Uh, yeah, Mix Dizzy points out that woman could also be used to ban abortions for minors too. If a court rules that woman equals adult female, uh, then yeah, that could be used as well. If you want to ensure that the people who need abortions can get abortions you have to be careful with your language it's just it's that simple this is what this is one of the reasons why this particular issue became such a conflagration and i mean look take a look at how brutal uh this this fucking quote tweet storm was 8268 quote tweets and who knows how many replies
And the reason is because her argument is so bad, it's so lazy, and it's so uninformed that it's hard to believe that it would even come from a serious, you know, political analyst. And for the record, I'm not saying that people uh, should be horrible to Anna Kasparian. As everyone knows, imps, that's my community, imps only raid with love. That's the only type of any sort of raiding that we do is we only raid with love. Always, always been a rule, always will be a rule. Okay? Imps raid with love. Uh, don't be an asshole. But at the same time, uh, as we saw in the comments, the bulk of the large accounts responding to Anna Kasparian were not being rude, not even a little bit. They were being, if anything, almost like sexistly nice. People were showing up and being like, oh, uh, I don't want to offend you. I'm sorry. I know you're, I know you're a woman and I, I don't want to hurt you because, you know, women, you know how women are. No, that's, I'm going a little far. But honestly, there was a certain level of, uh, you get a little bit of that feeling sometimes when someone says something so blatantly wrong. Just, just guys, remember what we remember the last dog pile we were talking about. Remember how people treated Abigail Thorne for a incredibly niche uh, a trans issue that she was ultimately correct on, but that people took out of context. Do you remember how horrible people were to Abigail Thorne versus how people are treating Anna Kasparian? You know, sorry. Uh, everyone's like, Anna Kasparian is like, I, I am so offended that people would tell me to, sh to stop shitting in my pants and to instead simply walk to the bathroom. And then everyone's like, um, Anna, just so you know, um, I don't want to offend you. I don't want to hurt your feelings because, you know, you're a woman. Um, but you might have a better time in life if you shit in a toilet and not in your pants. Um, you know, especially publicly. It's, you know, I just, I just, I, you know, d feel free to ignore feel free to ignore the uterus people got her in the end <laughs> Anna honey the poopy goes in the toilet <laughs> that's how people were come on People were so nice. If you go into these comments, the vast majority of the people responding to her were being so kind. Did we even see a single... Did we even see a single person? I'm trying to find a single toxic one. No one is making anyone do this. Thank you. Huh. Never apologize for this. Look, look at this right here. Right wing influencer Seth Dillon. Just keep in mind that going along with what they're doing is the only way to support them. You either join them in their hostile takeover of what's real and true or you don't. Her argument is so bad that they can literally just slot it directly into their narrative. Oh my God. Here's another person very calmly explaining it. I have, we haven't even seen a single toxic comment from the left. Not one. Have we seen even one? This is the first one that I could even characterize. Anna, that might be one of the most turf things that you could say. That's the worst that we've seen so far. You guys know all I had to do on the uh, Abigail Thorne dog pile was open the quote tweets and the literal first tweets that we saw were people being toxic like horrifically toxic to abigail thorne look at how different the treatment is holy shit damn matt dillahunty that's a name i haven't heard in a long time anybody remember atheist experiment matt experienced matt dillahunty matt dillahunty says there's a category person with a uterus some of those people are women some aren't i won't call you that course but whether or not you're a part of that set is a matter of fact not opinion but please keep lecturing on how to support the trans community expert and then of course some weird right winger 
uh, followed by shoe on head, comes in and says, chill with the mansplaining, bro. Here's this guy saying, uh-oh, you just said something mildly at odds with the Alphabet Mafia's approved narrative. Good luck to you. Ha ha ha. Right-wingers are so pathetic. I love how all right-wingers immediately turn into, like, the fruitiest, the fruitiest fucking uh, person you can imagine. Uh-oh, you just said something at odds with the Alphabet Mafia. Good luck. The moment they the moment they think that a, a left winger agrees with them, they all turn into like the most the most gay hairdresser that you've ever seen. Oh my god, girl! You just so goofed up. It's so fucking funny. They all just instantly transform into that. It's true. This is an insult to gay hairdressers because they have actual humor. Yes, but I'm just saying that like that's their first instinct. Their first instinct is to just like become the most cattiest uh flamboyant people you can imagine it's like tr it's like trump trump is like that all the time we mask mama we mask god that's a classic Here's the first one I've even seen with a swear, by the way. I have scrolled down probably a hundred comments and I finally found one with a swear. Unblocking you to tell you you're a piece of shit for joining this transphobic mass hysteria while being silent about anti-trans legislation. How does a very small niche of people using terms like birthing person to include trans men and non-binary people invalidate you? Get a grip. This is the first mean comment we've even seen scrolling through this. The first one. Look, here's Michael Tracy. Um, I regret to inform you that you have just endorsed literal genocide. Fuck off, Matt, Matt, Michael Tracy. Michael Tracy is a, is like, Michael Tracy is the embodiment of the like, the like crater headed drooling Wojak. Like unironically, one of the stupidest people I've ever encountered on the internet. Oh, and here now we're getting into the just raw transphobia down here. Here we go. Let's read. Let let us read Luxander's uh 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 thread. L Luxander always does good stuff. Hey, Anna Kasparian. With respect, have you heard of Robert Eads? He was a trans man who died of ovarian cancer because of the idea that only women have uteruses and need access to reproductive health care. The opinions you've been espousing are the same as the ones that led to his death. He was denied care by 27 doctors because they didn't want to have him scaring the women in their offices. Or really, was it to teach him a lesson? Because if he was a man, then why should he need that type of care? They wanted him to die a woman's death. And nowadays, trans men are still denied care because of the idea that only women need abortion access and pap tests. But trans men lost their rights too when Roe fell. That's what I was arguing earlier. Based! Christians aren't hurt when we say happy holidays to acknowledge non-Christians, and cis women aren't hurt, or at least they shouldn't be if they don't have main character syndrome, when we acknowledge that many kinds of people have uteruses and need access to abort abortion and birth control. Women are people, and some women have uteruses and some don't. Sometimes it's accurate to just say women are affected by this, and in other cases it's more accurate to say people with uteruses are affected by this. I just wanted to clearly and respectfully explain in hopes that you might see the opposing perspective without hostility. The, the cancel mob has come for me! Look, Sanders great. Oh, Sam Cedar went over it? Okay, all right. I'll react to Sam Cedar going over it. All right, let's hear what Sam Cedar has to say. We'll, we'll wrap this segment with a react segment. Uh, uh, sure, why not? Let's do a react segment. I haven't reacted to the, to the Sam Cedar. Hey, uh, this is John. I'm calling from Indiana. John from Indiana. What's on your mind? Hold on, hold on. Hey, uh, I just wanted to say, first off, I'm a big fan. Uh, I've been listening to you guys for uh, a couple of years now. Right. Um, and, uh, I really appreciate, uh, listening in on news commentary. That doesn't make me feel desolate. So does not make you feel like what? Hopeless. Oh, hopeless. All right. Well, we do our best. 
Yeah. Um, but, um, but I wanted to call, uh, and I, and I'm trying to word this without being too inflammatory. Oh, wait, since we're at the end of this, if you are here, press like on the stream. You know that this stream has been an absolute banger. And first of all, I would love you to press like on the stream. And second of all, I would love you to press subscribe and make sure that you ring the bell because we would love to have you back. This community is exploding in growth. There are more imps every single day. We're doing amazing stuff on this show. and We've got a bunch more content to come tonight. So I would love it if you would press like and subscribe on the stream right now thank you very much let's continue great um i wanted to call about anna Kasparian, um because i feel like that is not getting the right kind of attention um and so okay. and, I, and i know you were gone yesterday sam yeah i but, think um I, I think i did you oh, see sorry, I, yeah. I commented on this yesterday yeah yeah that's okay. right yeah. Um, and, and I know she's a friend of the show and I know that, you know, her and Emma are personal friends. And so, um, you know, I, I, I don't think that it's, you know, you need to like completely lambast someone, but I just, I don't know. I felt like for instance, the clipping of that, um, with the title that she's not anti-trans was not necessarily the right. It just, to me, it just seemed kind of tone deaf. Um, I guess the problem I had was that like that tweet in and of itself, it wasn't great, but I think the, the bigger context was the reply. Um, it got very combative and a lot of Nazis popping in, agreeing with her. Ben Shapiro's retweeting her. Carrie Lake popping in saying, hey, a broken clock. Um, and, um, you know, I just, I, and some of the replies from her, I, I'll be honest, were indistinguishable from something that, you know, J.K. Rowling would say. Uh, but, I, but, but within the context of like her larger commentary on trans people i don't think that's the same a fair fair critique to put her in the same boat as jk rowling and like you can have i think <clears throat> quibbles with the way the video is titled i didn't even know that was getting clipped and i and i don't sure. have control over any titling so but the substance of what i said yeah, is yeah. That's, was and that's not anything about any one per uh, yeah. that's just more of like a critique of like you know just show formatting um yeah well let me all right let me let me let me let me uh, since emma addressed this yesterday let me let me uh let, let me comment on it and i and i will say this i mean we, we in terms of just, and I don't want to spend too much time because this is just sort of a process thing about the, the, the titling and this and that. We, yeah. w when the way that we do this show is we do the show and then um, uh, another person clips the show. Now there's, a, a, on occasion, I'll say like, oh, somebody really wanted this phone call or this and that and I'll send a message. But part of the reason yeah. why we do that is because uh, I don't want, what we do on the show to be dictated to how uh, I think it's going to do on YouTube. Okay, but this Clicks. is boring. This part is boring. Like, so, but that's a side. Yeah. That's a second order thing. Feed into the whole thread of that right, because let's talk, let's get to the actual I was meat. literally constantly moving yesterday. No, no offense to to Sam Cedar, but I don't really care about their clipping process. <laughs> no offense, I don't, I don't care. Uh, but look. Uh, I, I don't, I, I don't, I don't have any reason to believe, based upon her commentary in the past, that that Anna is anti-trans. But the, tweeting out something like that, in my estimation, is um, the tweet itself, the act, and the tweet in this context, right? Um, is is an is an anti-trans act. I just think it is. Yeah. Uh, because. Based trans ally Sam! Oh, my fandom of Sam only goes stronger! Sam Cedar. Let me tell you a little story, real quick, first of all, okay? Sam Cedar was probably the single most influential content creator in bringing me from a sort of generic. Uh, left-leaning, no real di political direction position to being a leftist. Sam Cedar is the one who made me make the jump from just sort of m trying to make my way in the world and having sort of vaguely environmentalist left-leaning politics to actually being a leftist. And still, to this day, I will stand Sam Cedar, even though Sam and I have some very different political policies 
because at his heart, I think Sam is still one of the most based, one of the most veteran, and one of the longest track rec records of just being so goddamn based on so many issues. Sam Cedar, amazing. Haven't we listened to like your first ever Sam Cedar call in? No, actually, I've never called into Sam Cedar. I've always been too nervous to call into Sam Cedar. What you heard was my uh, my call in to David Pakman, which I listened to David Pakman back when I was like just having left uh, my cult. I was just starting to figure out where where I wanted to go politically, and I actually called in to David Pakman on the night of the. Uh, 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 of the uh, election of Donald Trump to talk about trans issues. I talked to David Pakman about trans issues. Um, that was a long time ago. Um, it was on the election night episode. If you go and watch uh, David Pakman's 2016 election night episode, you'll hear a call in uh, from me. Um, I don't have the link available, but yes, that's the... Uh, yeah, anyway, uh, but Sam Cedar... That's all an aside. I'm doing a, I'm pulling a Sam right now. The point is Sam Cedar based as hell. And I sound like a baby and my voice sounds terrible because I hadn't done any voice training and I was really, really nervous and I was really scared that night. Uh, but I really wanted to call in to David Pakman's show and talk about trans issues because he wasn't talking about trans issues on his show. And I really wanted to make the point that uh, trans people were going to suffer a lot under Donald Trump. And sure enough, we did. Uh, uh, but but anyway, let's go. Let's continue. Let's continue. You know, in, in context is is everything in this case. Yeah. Um, I, you know, uh one of the issues I had with Sam Harris back in the aughts was that right in the midst of a, of a, a debate in this country about uh, torture, he writes up uh, a, a, a thing in uh, Huffington Post, which is basically the equivalent of Twitter, maybe bigger than Twitter in terms of like, you know, broadcasting this stuff, you know, a, a piece that he titled um, in defense of torture. And, you know, even if I thought that his uh, thought experiment and whatnot had like any sort of like substance, which I, I, I didn't, but even if I did to tweet that out in the midst of a debate about torture in this country is clearly a political act in and of itself. And he knows what he's doing there. Now, I don't know uh, if Anna was, you know, sort of how, how conscious she was of this or what, but in addition to the fact that no one uh, no one is yep. forcing anybody to accept any type of like, uh, you know, description of who they are. True. This is what I opened it with. I opened with saying that she didn't have to make the tweet. There wasn't any pressing reason for her to make a tweet like that. She just did it. In fact, you know what? Let's take a quick break real quick. And I just want to look up something. Hold on. Real quick. I just want to see, I want to see when Anna Kasparian last talked about trans issues, just out of curiosity. Let's see. Oh no, it's everybody else. Wait, how do I, oh, I have to do an advanced search, okay? From this account. Okay, mentioning, hold on. trans let's see that here we go the le wait let's see let's look at the latest tweet so before this instance the last tweet in which she mentioned the trans community was nearly a year ago if you or anyone you know is trans and slept with Joe Rogan, we'd like to know so we can understand why he's so obsessed with the trans community. Thanks for helping us get the word out, Glenn. I appreciate it. It's been nearly a year, and it was to make a joke about trans people fucking Joe Rogan. Just so that we're clear. And then the next one is, of course, this incident. Maybe, let's see, maybe we'll, we'll give her, let's try another one. Let's see, transgender. None. None. 
What a what a fucking slime ball. That's so pathetic. That is pathetic. So embarrassing. And um I am sure there are some quarters, I wouldn't even say quarters, sixteenths, eighths, you know, whatever it is, where people exclusively use language like uh, birthing people as opposed to women and birthing people. But uh, it, it really has no impact on our life. <laughs> and uh, it has a huge impact on the lives of people who are trans. And, you know, right. look, there are, you know, it, it, it's not easy for older people, in my estimation, or people just not used to it, to always remember to have some level of sensitivity to these things. Uh, and people should do their best. I mean, I, you know, as a, as a, I don't have a rule about it uh, on the show, but for me personally, I always attempt to say, you know, if we're talking about abortion laws, um, I try and say women and people who can get pregnant, uh, you know, I mean, as just a because it, it is it, it it costs me nothing and it shows respect to people out there and particularly, particularly at a time where these there are people who are under assault for being trans. Uh, there are families who are under assault for trying to get their uh their kids, some type of, uh, of medical care, uh, in some way, gender affirming care or to deal with this. And, and you know, it, it, it is particularly incumbent upon us to, to show that level of, of sensitivity to the, the people who are impacted and to this moment. And so, you know, I, 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 I just thought that the, the tweet itself, um, and I don't know what her intentions were about it, but I do, the idea that saying, um, you know, semen uh, providers um, in any way, you know, and, and, and look, I, I will say like, you know, the, saying semen providers, I don't think uh, disregards my, my manhood in some way. I understand right. that though that there is a it's not a perfect analogy because the fact is is that women have been a subject to misogyny and to sexism uh and and men yeah. have not there's a different power dynamic nevertheless i don't think that in any way women uh women are in any way uh um harmed in the uh, the the sort of like society's consciousness by the use of things like um you know people who can get pregnant yeah i mean there's i think you said it right sam and i again i elaborated on this yesterday um i think it's perfectly valid to say in your personal life like i don't want to be referred to in those more clinical kind of stilted awkward terms that uh are inclusive language meant to be inclusive and and we're still incorporating it into our language you know it's not that many years right. and of course nobody does this this was one of the first things that i pointed out in my section which we did before but uh, that we've been using this kind of terminology. I think that's entirely fair. My, uh, my critique was, well, as a member of the media, you have to understand, and, and at least this is what I try to bring to it, is that you can't, you're not just speaking for yourself. Of course. Um, and putting an emphasis on that in this current context is going to lead to l larger... Uh, problems and adding gasoline to a fire that is already raging as trans erasure is a part of le state legislatures across the country and on the federal level we'll, we're seeing it from republicans too and just like general hate crimes towards them so that was my emphasis um and i i i I understand uh, if you didn't feel it was sufficient but i i'm i'm with sam on this and and that's my take as well and I will say, look, look, if someone in your personal life, in your private life is, you know, um, you know, addressing you in a way that you don't like, you, you tell them um, if, uh, you know, I don't know that there's anybody on 
on on Twitter who has been addressing, you know, her as a, a, a birth potential birth giver. Um, well, I that's mean, kind of my whole point is like it feels like she's shadow boxing against an opponent that doesn't exist. Yeah, because I, I agree. No one on the street is calling her that. Nobody, and and like you know, you go well, to somebody's the, calling her on the street. You know, I mean, that may the be the ACLU case. You were saying that somebody's calling like, her. Well, yeah, but it's specific legal and medical context. No one is saying, you know, to her, to anyone. Hey, there goes a birthing person. Unless they're talking about, hey, we need to. We're writing a paper or a a prescription or some kind of thing about like i mean you, you know, don't necessarily but caller like that could have been a personal instance we you don't know that and i actually well, if it is a personal that, instance, but, but either but but that's you deal with it there but that's beside the point but that, that's my point right like if it's a personal instance you know we're members of the media we're representatives of the left like uh i mean i i know that that's like <laughs> what tyt is right and that's what people associate with them you have to just be conscious about that um and, and like you know i'm not conflating one's own personal experience even if it's awkward with, like, what is generally good for society so that's that that's my uh i think that's the the kernel of critique there appreciate the call that was supposed to be the bazinga but all right now i'm not gonna say we I, can't I take any more calls on that once. but we did just dedicate 11 minutes to it and that's you know i think that's fair private. and whatever you know i did yesterday five six minutes yesterday right, right. Uh, All right. Well, cool. All right. Well, obviously, Sam Sam Cedar and Emma Vigland always uh, quite based. Uh, I I always appreciate uh, their their approach to things. I always have loved the majority report and still do. I feel very strongly about them. But of course, they they touched on most of the things that I cared about, with a few exceptions. Um, but yeah, uh, yeah, I think that was fine. That was a, that was refreshing.